Hi guys, it's Sarah, welcome to Books for Tea. Today I want to do my June wrap up and my July TBR. I am combining the two because I really don't have a lot of books to talk about. For my wrap up, um, I finished one book and one little poetry collection and that's it. I read uh, half of another book but didn't finish it this month. So I thought that I would also talk about the books I want to read in July because while I don't think that I'll have really a lot of time to read and I might not get to any of these books, um, I just have this pile of books that I really really want to read in July so I thought that I could share it with you. Basically most of these books are still books that I talked about in my May TBR because I just haven't been reading a lot. But anyway, let's get right into the books that I want to talk about and I hope you enjoy it, so let's go. First of course, the one book that I actually read and finished in June and that is The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater, the second book in the Raven Cycle. So the Raven Cycle obviously follows these four boys called the Raven Boys um, who are just this group of teenage boys that go to this private school that has a raven as their symbol, that's why they are called Raven Boys and um, basically one of them is really really obsessed with finding this old Welsh king and they talk a lot about mythology and stuff like that and the four of them try to find the king and wake him because whoever wakes him will also be granted a wish and um, then we also find out that they have other magic abilities and there's so much magic just in this book and um, we also follow Blue which is a girl from a family of psychics but she herself does not have any psychic ability and she befriends those boys and they go on adventures together. It is so unlike anything I have ever read also because of the writing style. I have talked about this in um, another wrap up where I talked about the Raven Boys but it takes you a lot of time to get into it and I totally get why people DNF the Raven Boys. It took me like half of the first book to get into the style. Every single word in this book is important and you have to focus 100% of your attention and everything on this book in order to even really get it. You have to be completely into the world. And that's actually also the really, really cool thing about this. Maggie Stiefvater has such a unique writing style and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I gave the first book five stars. This one um, was just a continuation, so I'm not going to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. But it was more about Ronan and in the first book I didn't really like him. In this one he really grew on me and I still like all the other characters a lot. And this book I didn't rate 5 stars. I would say it's 4 or 4.5 stars, which probably has to do with the fact that I couldn't fully immerse myself into this. I did not have time to just sit down for a whole day and like read half of this like I did with the Raven Boys. As I said, you need to be completely in the right mindset for this book and for a lot of the month I wasn't. It took me over half the month to finish this, but I still really, really liked it. And um, as I said, for up and five stars, it's still a great rating. Um, I'm really, really excited to continue the series and hopefully finish it over the summer or at least until the end of the year. I will not be continuing the series in July, probably. But once I finish my semester, I might really immerse myself um, back into this world and get the last two books read because, as I said, I really, really enjoy the world and the writing style and the characters that Maggie created. And yeah, I'm really, really glad that I read this book and I enjoyed it a lot. So if you have read The Raven Cycle, definitely let me know what was your favorite book and what is your favorite character. I would be really interested to know. And as I said, I finished one more little book. It's basically a poetry collection. I got it for review because it sounded super interesting and I read it in a day. And it is um, Quarter Life Poetry by Samantha Janey. It's a German translation and um, it has really, really cute, it has a really, really cute art style. Basically you have um, really really short little poems about life in your 20s while being graduated from uni and um, all your friends having their life together but you don't and it has those really really cute illustrations and um, a poem on every page. 
However, as I said, it's a translation and I really, 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 really felt like the whole thing about the poems just got lost in translation. I thought that they did not work well in German, they did not stick with me. I really like the whole idea of quarter-life poetry and a quarter-life crisis. I can definitely understand that, but sadly, just maybe it's it could totally just be the translation, but it did not work for me, it didn't do anything, and I rated it two stars. And yeah, that's sadly all I can say about this book. And basically that is it for my wrap up. So now I will get into my TBR. And the first book on there is actually one that I have spent um, most of the last weeks reading. And that is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I am pretty much exactly halfway through this book. And basically this is about a girl that lives in a village where every 10 years there's this magician called the dragon who takes one girl from the village to live in his tower. And this is about Inyashka um, and everyone in this village is sure that Inyashka's best friend is gonna be taken because she's beautiful and just the basically the best girl from that whole year. Um, so they all are sure that the dragon's gonna take her. But, of course, instead he takes the main, main character, Inyashka, into his tower and she has to live with him. And so far it's really interesting. I like the magic system that is in this book. And it has a lot to do with the wood that surrounds the um, village. It's a magic wood that's really dangerous. And it's really, really interesting. Um, I'm halfway through it. I'm not loving it so far. I think it's okay and, as I said, interesting. So I'm excited to see how it will continue on throughout the next half. Um, I kind of want to put it on hold, maybe because I'm just... I, I only have like really short times of reading at the moment. And this is another book that I have to be super into it and really immerse myself into the fantasy world, which I can't really do at the moment. But at the same time, this is a traveling book and I want to like finish it and keep it going. But we will see what I do because... I feel like it's gonna take me a while until I finish this and I'm not sure what I'm gonna do but I do hope to finish it in July so that's why it's on my TBR. The next book I would like to read is um, a book that has been our Kindred Readers book club pick a couple of months ago and I didn't join at that time because I didn't have time to read it and I really, really, really want to read it now and that is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. This is so stunning and cool and it, is, and it is a Alice in Wonderland retelling about the Queen of Hearts and what happened before she became this evil queen. I've heard great things about it. I also heard some people say that they didn't really like it. The opinions of the girls from my Kindred Readers group were pretty split and mixed about this. Um, but I think that I'm gonna enjoy it and I'm excited to read it. It's another pretty big book. I hope that I can get through it even though I have exams and everything coming up, but I basically have to read this in uh, July, so wish me luck. <laughs> then the next book is the actual Kindred Readers book club pick of the month for July, and that is The Upside of Unrecreated by Becky Avotelli. So excited for this, probably my most anticipated read of the year. I adore Simon with the Homo Sapiens agenda. I can't wait to read this. I basically know nothing about this, other than that uh, it also has some diverse elements and it's gonna be a really really cool and hopefully fun contemporary, I can tell. And I think it's gonna be a fast read which is just what I need and I'm so excited because I just loved Simon so much and I can't wait to get into this book. And if you want to read it with us, definitely do. Kindred Readers is always linked in my description so you can totally check that out and read the book with us, that would be amazing. The next book I am hoping to finish and read is Alex and Eliza by Melissa de la Cruz. I received this for review a couple of months ago. I never had the time to finish it because of my big, big book slump. I never even started it actually. But um, it's obviously about Hamilton, about Alex and Eliza who fall in love and I'm still the biggest Hamilton fan. I'm gonna see Hamilton next year which is so exciting. And um, I really, really hope that I can finish this in July. I hope that it's going to be a fun and light romance that's not going to take me too long to read. And I'm just really, really excited because I still love Hamilton so very much. 
Other than that, I would like to finish Women in Science, 50 Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World by Rachel Ignatowski because I've been reading this for the last couple of months and I've just started it and always read a couple of pages. Um, basically, there's one page about one woman in science who basically changed the world and it's inspiring and beautiful and the artwork in this is stunning and I really, really want to finish it. And yeah, it's it's really educational. I love it. It doesn't take you like a lot of time to read through this, but I for some reason haven't been able to finish this and I would really like to do that in July. Now, as I said, I don't have a lot of time and this TBR is probably too ambitious, but I still wanted to include A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness because in June I watched the movie and I cried and it was great. I'm really happy that I have this. I absolutely love the story the movie told. Maybe the book is even gonna be better. Um, this has beautiful illustrations in it and it's gonna be a quick fast read. It's gonna be emotional and sad and I really hope that I can sit down and read this. Hopefully, fingers crossed. So that is it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Definitely let me know what you have read in June and what you want to read in July. Let me know if you have read any of the books I talked about in this video and what you thought of them. Thank you so very much for watching. I will hopefully see you again with another video very, very soon. And goodbye.